Hi everyone. Um, I just going to do a sort of end of year roundup. This is, this isn't like the most comprehensive. There's in no particular order, and I think I don't actually even have ten. I have nine, but I thought I'd give it a go. Um, so yeah, first off, I'll mention the few albums which I didn't actually buy this year, but I've got sort of um, MP3 sort of promotional copies of it. Um, uh, first off, I'd like to talk a bit about um, Tune Yard's last album, uh, Nicky Knack, which, um, you know, I'm, I'm not a big fan of um, Meryl's music, but um, that album I did actually particularly enjoy, even though it can be, it's one of those albums that's it's, it's a bit preachy and it's sort of full of it, all this sort of, um, sort of typical sort of white liberal guilt, but when you look past that, um, is a really, really, really strong record. Um, other ones that I can remember getting is, um, yeah, the, the Temples, well, Temples, their first album. Um, not an absolute masterpiece, but a really solid, strong album. It's a really great songs on there. Um, sort of uh, No Frills, sort of 60s psychedelia. Um, yeah, I, I actually quite enjoyed that record, and um, another one I can remember particularly enjoying is um, the Sleaford Malt, um The Volume and Exit, which uh, came out earlier this year. Um, I mean, that album, it, it's it's a bit like um, sort of John Cooper Clark, which um, it's not quite as witty, but it's um, it, it's sort of it's pretty much worthy, you know, in lieu of the fact that John Cooper Clark isn't doing much recording wise these days. But yeah, it's still a brilliant um, album, especially the track where they, um, yeah, about people endlessly tweeting on public transport um, and all the constant rants about the Prime Minister <laughs> um, and the Tory government. Um, so yeah, moving on to the stuff that I did actually have actually got hard copies of, and I'll start off with um, this one, St Paul and the Broken Bones. Um, saw them play live actually. Um, I'd spent sort of thirty quid on a ticket at this festival in Bristol just to see them. It's the only way I could actually see them play, and. Um, it was, it was an absolute riot. I mean, the sound was a bit shitty, but um, this being a festival, the the um, sound guys, were, the sound engineers, were probably sort of um, worked off their arse. You know, you don't get much time for changeovers there. Um, and this turned out to be a really good album. Um, no frills, soul music, and. Paul Jingmei, who actually like um, <coughs> managed to chat to after the gig, you know, he was um, he's actually brilliant, absolutely brilliant to talk to. You know, I don't usually approach musicians, but I was I was so blown away by um, seeing them that I just had to. I just got to him and say, yeah, how much I enjoyed it. And I did manage to interview him um, for my website, Figure Eight. Um, but it was only via email. Um, but yeah, brilliant, brilliant record. And, you know, I, I was I was telling that like, Paul from the band like, about um, we we just I was just doing this sort of really sort of nerdy sort of conversation about soul music. You know, I'm a complete anorak when it comes to that. Um, I was telling him about the time that I interviewed uh, Booker T. Jones, um, and yeah, it was a really nice meeting them. Um, so I've got a few bits of vinyl I bought this year. Um, I'm actually, as I said before, I'm surprised how out of the loop I am, um, and I'm really glad to improve this year. Um, right, so. Um, First off, I've spoken about this in previous videos, uh, Earth, Primitive and Deadly, um, really, really enjoyed this um, album, 
it's not the kind of thing I listen to all the time, but um, in its own sort of very slow, sort of um, sloth like pace, you know, when you get into the whole um, feel of it, you know, it's a really good record. Um, I'm biased because I'm a dinosaur junior nut, and I think Damascus' album, I really enjoyed it. Real strong effort, you know. Very rarely makes a bad album, and I'm looking forward to seeing him play next month. Um, then there's Peru Boo. What more can I say? I'm a massive fan. Um, didn't get to see him play live again due to the fact that um, I was a bit hard up. They paid play towards the end of November and uh, that particular month was a bit of an expensive month for me so I had to uh, avoid that one. Although well, ironically I ended up seeing uh, this year I ended up watching like Teleman play twice and you know I mean Teleman in the right group uh, but it's funny I haven't actually bought their album or anything like that. I don't even have a mp3 copy of it anywhere. Um, but this is probably my underrated album of the year. Um, I probably raved on about this a bit too much, but um, Merchandise After The End, uh, their first album on 4AD. Um, I, I really like it, and I don't really give a shit that the critics um, bashed it. You know, it's you, you have to persevere with it. I, I thought it was a bit bland when I first heard it but I, I did really really start to enjoy it and anyone who likes 80s music any of that 80s college rock stuff should really sort of at least give this a go you know uh, one track sounds a lot like Lloyd Cole and the commotions um, yeah and, and it also sounds a bit like the cure in all those sort of 80s bands you know really really worth listening to in my opinion um, and probably my favorite this was probably my favorite album of the year um, I mean I've seen this band play <coughs> live last year <clears throat> sometime last year and it absolutely blew me away and I got into their music Swans um, To Be Kind which um was actually an improvement. <clears throat> sorry, sorry about my voice. It's um, got a bit of a cold. Um, which it was actually an improvement over the Seer. Um, still, it's not an easy album to listen from start to finish, and it's not something I do particularly often. But um, this album was much more sort of eclectic. Uh, there's bits that sound quite funky, uh, bits that sound almost like a bit Captain Beefheart-ish, um, although in some ways it did more or less follow on from where the Seer left off, but yeah this is probably my favourite album of the year, um, really enjoyed it. Um, unfortunately didn't get to catch um, Swans when they played live this year, but um, oh well. So yeah. That's um, sort of my favourite albums of the year, or some of the albums I've enjoyed. Um, next video I'm going to talk a bit about some really good reissues that have come out this year. <laughs>